Hi, it's Jill with Crickflex. I just filmed a part um, of the, oh, it wasn't even of these. But anyway, I was talking about removing a color from an image to cut it out separately. And I decided to do a screen recording. Got a mini here, a couple things. Over here, you'll see that I have some minis and daisies that I've been working on. They have a white background on them because I put the offset on them. The one I'm going to work on, if I move it over here, you can see the offset. If I zoom in a little bit here, you can see the white. I'm going to ungroup it. I did a duplicate here so I could show you, and I'm going to remove that. I do not want anything. It has to, it cannot be pieced together and ha have a background or anything to do what, I, what I'm going to do. Okay, now... I want just her shoes, and on this particular one, I'm going to make it easier and get a bit better um, image is by, I'm going to get rid of what I don't want, which is her dress. I'm going to get that out of the picture. Um, it's just easier to trace. So I'm going to remove that, and this is all I'm going to do. So I'm going to go into my color, whoops, my trace, sorry, my tra trace. And up here, you see this eyedropper here to the right? I'm going to click on that, and it'll pop in here for Trace by Color. I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to touch on the pink. First thing I'm going to do is go all areas. I want all areas that are pink. So see, now it got both shoes. And if I zoom in, it's kind of easier to tell when your lines, that your lines are staying straight. Now right here, you can see I have part of the shoe here and here. But if you look really closely, this is a little bit different shading in this and here. So the higher, higher I bring the tolerance, the more it's going to come out to the pieces. Did I bring the right one here? No, I brought the wrong one over here. Hold on just a minute now. Let me move the right one over here. There we go. Now on this one, if you zoom in, you can see this is a little bit darker and this piece right here is a little bit darker. So as I bring my tolerance in more, that bar darker piece is going to show up. And I'm going to bring my tolerance up as high as I need to so that it's a solid yellow. And so when I do a trace and detach, which I just hit just now, then I'm going to pull it aside. And there is my piece. Um, these black lines are there from the, the little seams on her shoes. But if I highlight what I want, I don't think I can remove that part. Let me just see. No, I don't think, and I don't care that they're there. It doesn't matter because I'm going to make these out of glitter. So that's all I did. And now if I, if I take my color and let's say I just wanted to make them a lighter pink, I can just change the color there and put it back there. And that would be how I want to change just the color of an uh, a particular item. I can do it. Let's see here. I'm going to move these shoes, move her off. I'm not, I've already got these to cut out. I'm going to cut them out of glitter. But if I wanted to do, let's say, just her dress, again, I'm the only reason I'm duplicating her. And come on. I don't know if I can now. I've got to zoom out here a little bit. There we go. And let me see, do you, okay, it's not, it won't let me duplicate now, and I don't know why. It must be something to do with having done this. Let me see if it work on this one. Yeah, I can duplicate this, but I can't duplicate the other one. Let me move it over here so I can see the white background. I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to pull this piece away. Oops. And cut out or get rid of the white background and I want to do just her dress you don't have to take this out like the face you don't have to take any of it out but I found it to be easier to trace if I didn't have um, as much going on if I kind of cut my cut my image down to to less colors <laughs> and just switch over to the wrong picture okay I'm going to get rid of those, and on here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to take this. I'm going to go by trace, by eyedropper, my trace by color, and I'm going to type or hit the light pink all areas. Now, as I bring up the tolerance on this polka dotted area that I have, it's a lighter pink. 
So you will notice as I zoom in on it, the pink on the waistband, so far I'm doing good that it hasn't included and grabbed that dark pink from the waistband. It's just grabbing the light pink. So if I go trace and detach, I should have just the light pink. And I could still, let me see if it worked. Yep, there it is. And let me move that little, oh, that one didn't take that dot out. I don't know why, but I can group those all together. Um, and on this, since it didn't take that, that one particular little right here out, I'm going to just do a circle from over here. And I'm going to zoom in, give you another um, lesson here. Let's see, I'm going to make that circle a little bit bigger. I can't hardly see it. And I'm tracing the outline right now of this red, this, this polka dot. Okay, so I've got a red circle around it. I'm going to group those two together. And let me see if I can crop it. It took the wrong piece away. So let me see if I can make it a compound path. Well, I can do it that way, then just go back and color it in um, the light pink or whatever so I can go with the eyedropper and touch that pink and there I still got the same I wanted to cut this out of glitter and lay it over this dress so I'm hoping that just shows you how I pull the color out that's all I was trying to do and I will finish up my video thanks for watching bye bye Hi, it's Jill with Crook Flicks. Um, in the last film I made, I couldn't find my little control for re my remote. So I decided to hook it up on a keychain so that I would stop losing it all the time. So now I've got it all on this clanky chain. Um, I just did a screen sharing because in my video that I did of the Prince Mickey, which was my last video, it hasn't uploaded yet but I'm hoping it'll be this one getting uploaded. I was talking about how I extracted the color, so I decided to do a screen share and show you what I did. So we're gonna start with that. I'm working on four minis for the mini boutique. Um, the one that I'm working on right now with the shoes is this little one. These are all um, 15 inches, and I believe it was 15 inches, I'm pretty sure. I just better double check. I can't tell anymore by looking at them. Yeah, they are. They're 15 inches, and there's too many and too daisy. But they are the characters from, you can see the, her ponytail, from the, the boutique. These are all glittered and put together and pretty much ready to go, except for the side of this one. But I wanted to do the shoes. I didn't like the way this came out. I tried to use the Nouveau glitter in the pink on her shoes. And guys, stickles is the only thing. I do not like this Nouveau at all. I like the solid colors, like for the accent in her eyes, or their eyes, to do that. Uh, I found a couple of uses, but anything else, to me, the solid colors remind me of puff paint. I don't like them at all. I would never recommend them to anybody. Um, I mean, I'm sure they have their uses, but I probably haven't figured out what, what they are, because I don't like them uh, at all. I'm, I'm hung up on stickles. That's about all that I use. I cut this image that I just showed you on the little on the beginning with my little screen sharing of the shoes. Now I'm just peeling them off the mat. And I'm going to do one at a time so I don't get them mess, messed up because I didn't try and connect the um, the little one that was a little different color on the inside. I I left them separate pieces on the Cricut cartridge. Um, they do have the mini or Mickey and friends and they have the shoes and I know that's how they're cut out. Um, I just wanted to do it that way. It had nothing to do with the cricket. I don't know why I even said that, but I did because I'm trying to remember why this is familiar to me. I'm going to use my glue instead of, um, instead of the tape. Because I really want to make sure these stay on there. So I'm using my clear, dries clear glue. i got to go online and see if I can find this. I guess I have to go to my famous Amazon. Because that seems to be the only place I have any luck with finding things I need. And I got the wrong piece. 
here's the piece I need off of this shoe. I'm gonna use my little bees tweeze, best tweezers ever, absolutely love them. Um, you can get them at Michael's Hobby Lobby or online. Again, they're called bees tweeze, and I really like them because they're really, really fine tip. And I just like the way, I mean, I've got every manufacturer of, twi of tweezers, I have them. And the only ones I like are, are these. So that piece went on perfect. I want to see how this goes on. And I really do like this feature um, where you can extract the color because the images, since I don't use the Cricut cartridges anymore that have everything done in layers, um, you can do the exact same thing if you really, really like that. So you can go and do the layers without any problem at all by using that, that feature. Um, another thing you do can do is you can go in and trace the whole image and break it down by tracing the lines and and pull it all apart. And again, then do the different color layers. Um, you have to be really, pra you have to practice on that um, to do it that way where you, you break the whole piece apart where I would trace and take the whole thing to try and change the colors. You have to really practice with that because on some images, it just, it, it doesn't come out that well. Um, works good for color book images, but that's not extracting color. You're just tracing it in black and white and then coloring it in. And I'm mumbling here as I put the shoes on. It's a little harder to put the shoes on because I'm going over a glitter, that nouveau that I don't like. It also says it takes 24 hours to dry. And I have not figured that one out yet because I've used it before. Um, more than once. I've used it. Um, I try not to waste them because they were not cheap, especially when I ordered them. I didn't order one color to try it out. I ordered them all, including the case, to try it out, which is just really stupid on my part. But what am, what am I going to say? So anyway, this is kind of like the shoes on one of those images, again, on, on, on um, the cricket. So if you like doing things that way, I'm going to try tape on this side because I not like the way I need something heavy. I have my bottle of water, my can of water here, but it probably wouldn't be a real good idea. It seems to be sticking good here, but not on the other side. So I'm going to try this with my ATG tape. Let's see if that sticks better. Again, it's only because I put the glitter on that shoe. So now I'm trying to go right over it. It'll stick. I just have to figure out how I'm going to end up. Now I got the ATG, and the ATG is wider than this little piece here. So all I'm doing is pulling the over the overlap back. So I'm not pulling it off because you end up pulling off the whole piece that you just um, put on there. So I just roll it back, and that works just perfect. Okay, there we go. Good coverage. That one little piece. Oh, but I got it right here. Ooh, we. I think we got it. I think I got it. I got that little piece there. And I'm trying to think now. It's not this piece. Did I take it off here? And let me look. Yeah, it's off of there. It's off of there. I'm not. Here it is. There it is. So when you cut on the glitter, sometimes you can't see. Well, not sometimes. It's really hard hard to see the lines. So here's the piece that goes right in here. And it sticks better with tape, guys, than my glue. Or it's easier to do with my glue. My glue's starting to get tacky now, so it's sticking. But on these really skinny pieces, it's just hard to use tape tape doesn't fit on there. So I'm going to let this get tacky before I go to the other side. But these, <laughs> and this is a brand new mat guys. That's why it's not peeling up. Shouldn't have been sticking it on the mat. Should not have done that. Okay, goes over the other side. And well, I can go ahead and flip it over to do the other side. Those aren't going anywhere ever. I have too much stuff on my desk again. There is a shock. 
I've got, I don't know, three or four projects going on right now. So, um, I've got things, little stacks laying everywhere. Okay, now that's holding down. That's good. This, I put a little too much glue. So, this piece might take a little bit more time to, to get tacky. But in the meantime, I'm going to flip it over and do this side. And this side will be a whole lot easier because there's no glitter on it. And now my tape gun is not sticking. And let's try this again. Sometimes the backing on this, this glitter paper is real smooth and almost like a vinyl. So sometimes the tape struggles to stick to it. It kind of wraps around itself on my tape gun. And it's doing that right now. So to get it started, I usually just tip my gun up and I'm not gonna explain that. If anybody's got a tape gun, they know how they fix it. I get I get to explaining things that I think make you guys feel like I'm talking to two-year-olds. I apologize for that. Probably how I feel. It's usually it's my grandkids I'm talking to. Did art projects with them on Friday. Um, I tell you, I don't know what what age they are before they have attention lo longer than a nap because they're not there yet. <laughs> They were working on projects. We ended up having a uh, flower drawing contest where Papa and Isabel and Kendall all had to dry, draw a flower and then I had to be judge, the judge. Well, my husband, um, he has a hard time drawing a, a stick figure. Man cannot write and he cannot draw. He's got the worst penmanship I've ever seen in my life. Um, but he can't draw either. He tries to draw me out something that he's going to plan to make. And I never, I, I just, I can never figure it out. However, on this one, they laid their artwork down on uh, of the flowers. And then I had to go and pick which one, who did what. Had they not removed where they covered up their name, or not their name. I can't remember what they had written. I would have had a harder time guessing. Because my husband actually did a really good job on the flower. I was like amazed. But they said, if you hadn't showed me the writing, I would might have had a hard time guessing because I wanted to make sure I didn't say he was the, the best artist there. But what I did to, to keep from anybody having hurt feelings, I did uh, uh, I did the prize on the most unique, the most original, and the best colored. So then all three of them could be first first place winners. Even my husband, they all got to be a first place. And he actually got first place for color, coloring, which was not only a first place, it was the first time. Okay, there was a little story for you there, guys. Yeah, so anyway, there. That one went on a lot easier because there was no glitter on it. So I've got her, her pink glitter shoes on. And I'm going to go ahead and glitter her um, outfit. I did the diamond, diamond stickles in the polka dots. Did I do that? Oh, I'm looking for the little girl to see how I did it. I got a little girl right here. I did all the polka, doc, polka dots in diamond. You know, Minnie, or Minnie and, and Daisy, they're really into glitz and glamour, I tell you. But when it comes to trying to figure out what kind of blitz to add to them, I have a really hard time because I. it's not like I have a neckline on them to work with or um, there's just, there isn't a lot of options on there. So I use just a lot of glitter because I know they would be very disappointed to go to a party and they weren't in the proper glitter attire. And I just put glitter in the eye instead of my, instead of my glossy, my glossy accents. I, I get asked again, still repeating yes Sh shannon i know everybody knows certain things i'm not going to share um it's ranger glossy accent this is what gives them the shine in the eyes um i put it on i pick different spots where i'm going to put it on the pieces on her i'm just going to put it in her eyes and on her tongue 
because it gives it that kind of shiny wet feeling and I've got to figure out what I'm going to do on her belt. I think I'm going to um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to use the what did I use on this side? I only got to use the one I didn't like. Um, however, I only used it as an outline, which is probably okay. You can't see the front and the back at the same time. So I know what I did. I outlined her in thistles, this is called. And I don't like it. Um, I love the color, but it it's a real different texture to it. And it's harder to use. But it is my stickles. And I find that there's a couple colors they have that just, they're, they, they're made differently or something. I don't know what it is, but they don't go on as well or... I just don't like them as, as much as they do others. I love this color, though, the thistle. I think it was called thistle. I have, like I said, I had a couple of them. Thistle sounds more like a Christmas color. However, I'm pretty sure that's what this is. This was one that came in a three pack and, and it's one of the older. Um, the way that they used to do the stickles, it was quite different than now you can buy individual colors online. However, there's another one I made a comment on my last video about going to get something that I need and they're sold out. Um, one of them is the, is the stickles. I never know what colors are going to be available. Somebody sent me another link. Uh, I haven't gone there as of yet because I haven't, uh, I haven't needed to order. Um, I make do with a substitute a lot. No, not substitute teacher, guys. If anybody was thinking that, I substitute colors. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. It's kind of being a pain to get it out of the pack, of the tube. Okay. Um, I did the other, the two Daisy, and I did another mini, and they are all glittered and put together already so I'm not going to have much to do on this video unless I'm deciding to add some little accent pieces to them and we will see we're going to do one at a time and guys I'm going to apologize on my last video when I was talking about if anybody's encountered this kind of issue to let me know let me know um, sorry to anybody that felt that that was out off off uh, cue, um, but it is definitely something that I'm seriously need somebody that's been through it to tell me um, what this right here. Just to give you an idea, this right here I'm going through and putting blue sticky notes on here. On the sheets, I have to read through all of this, and this is seven months worth of text messages. We're going back four years because her attorney had said, make sure I kept track of everything, or she did. So she sent it to me to print out, and I have to go through and read, and I'm putting tabs in here in all of the things that, that pertain to the kids, and he can't take them. And, and the biggest thing is him bad-mouthing. Um, my daughter to the kids. They come home today after uh, the incident this weekend. He sent them a film. He filmed the kids interrogating them and um, accusing her new husband of things that we we know, we all know, aren't true. Um, and it's because he's grasping at straws to try and figure a way out of this mess he's gotten himself into. Uh, but Amy had already called services and and let them know, um, sent them an email and left them a voicemail message on their, on the counselor that's doing this study to let her know what's going on. Um, cause that's a big no, no. And he wrote her again on Friday and said, since you haven't responded to my message that he'd sent him interrogating the kids, which is awful. Um, he said, since you haven't responded, I'm going to go ahead and call child service as well. My daughter wrote back and said, um, I've already notified them. Thank you for your follow-up. And she said, and my attorney. And she hadn't heard back. She never heard anything back. I don't think he anticipated her doing anything with it. 
I think his tactic is to try and get her to cancel this study that they're doing and calling it off because if he just if she will just agree to giving him more time he will drop this whole pursuit of his and i think he thought that when he filed the motion in the first place and then she filed a motion to deny and got an attorney and that is not what he expected he expected her to just crash or cave and say okay what do you want i don't want this hassle but she didn't so he keeps doing all sorts of other things and filed a motion for one thing. And right now he's on his third approach on the same, on the same filing that he did. It's completely different, changed his perspective. Talking, if you believe your children were being abused by somebody or being mistreated or anything of the like, to me, a normal parent that would be concerned about that would not be saying, okay, um, I want more time with them so that they don't have to be subjected to this abuse more. A, a normal parent that really bo truly believes that would want the children removed from that person's home, period. But that isn't the case. He just wants more time. Other thing that he said in the first, first time was is they weren't getting enough sleep because their house was a three bedroom with six kids and the kids were piled up and not getting sleep because he didn't know they'd um, renovated and it was a five bedroom. They'd added on a family room, a fifth bedroom, five bedrooms and a third bath. So then he changed it that the house was too big and confusing. So guys, this is, has been a nightmare, just an absolute nightmare. But I have to go through all of those. I already went through one stack that's sitting in another folder um, and putting all the things there because she has to have she has to go with her guns loaded, that's for sure, because this is not going to be an easy task. The saying was that one attorney had said, it's really horrible to be mar married to a narcissist, but it's even worse to be divorced from one. And it sounds crazy, but it's I, I believe it wholeheartedly because they get so mad because they're no longer in control and it's the losing control that, that drives them. And Amy's the one that has been filed first. She filed the motion to deny his motion. And now she's moving forward tomorrow and contacting the guardian ad litem. But again, anybody that knows anything about that, please, those of you that have been following me know, and I know that you will be thinking of me and not telling me this is um, too much information. I know that there's going to be some very, very good feedback and help that will be provided that I'm asking for. So, and I'll thank you ahead of time because I know there'll be a lot of you giving us the encouragement that we need, not discouragement. I'm gonna put buttons on her little shoes if I can find enough of each pattern. I'm gonna do the little heart. It's a lacy heart on that one. And again, they're not gonna be on the same side, so um, all I care about is them being the same on one side. However, I did find another heart and I found another heart. So I can do all four on that one. Okay. And these have little button things on the back, but they're just made out of plastic. So I just clip them off, but I shouldn't be using my good scissors. And I could do the same thing with the hot glue and just bury this little piece into the hot glue. However, the plastic is really easy to cut off. So I'm doing that route. The, I did notice, and I'll just now looking at them all, they, they aren't the exact same heart. These two are, and these two are. So I want to make sure to use the same two on the shoe. So I will add my glob of glue. There we go. And she's got to look the part. This is, this is the mini boutique. She's got to be her mini made up. Um, now, if I was to do her again, I would use that method for the shoes and cut it out of the paper separately. This one I did with stickles. And it's not because it looks bad, but it takes a lot of stickles to do that where that cutting it out, um, like I did on the other one, worked easier. Super easy to do. Again, guys, some I, I get a lot of 
folks that say to me, you make it look so easy. Well, guys, I've, I've been crafting for 30 years or plus because I had a shop in Venezuela that I made clay, um, clay animals that I sold in the shop. And I made, um, back in the day, it was called dip and drape. It was a gesso fabric that you molded and made into dolls and painted them. <gasps> they were freaking awesome. Loved them. But I did that kind of stuff and sold it in the shop down there. So I've been doing crafts for, for years. So when I make it look easy, if it hasn't gotten easy after 40 years, I'm going to say all my life I've been into crafting. But if it, if it, it hasn't gotten easy for me after that many years, then I'm don't, not real bright to not have given it up. Okay, with her, this daisy, she's got the ponytail on. She's got the glossy in her eyes. She's got the purple glitter on her um, eyeshadow to go with her purple shop. Whoa, shirt. Um, I did the glitter around her bow. She had a yellow bracelet on here, where it's usually turquoise, but in this one it's yellow. Then I outlined her, her shoes in the pink with the glitter. Then I put the, the purple that was also like her her shirt it wasn't the same color purple but and then the gold circle well in the middle of that circle is a square so i took um and i've done more videos of these um they're toothpicks i don't know if they're for like hors d'oeuvres or cake i can't remember what department i'm looking because i have bags of them hanging up there but they're they're um i use them for my cake my cupcake toppers or cake toppers but I don't use the end of them and they have a little plastic square on the end well after I did my last cake toppers and broke all of these off I didn't throw them away I put them in a bag to find some use for them and I did I pulled the stick out of them because the toothpick is still in there and I don't want that sometimes it's kind of glued and I just grab my scissors and I pull it um, these work great for pulling things out when you don't have a plier hand, handy. You just have to remember and not to squeeze it too hard and cut it off. Done that. Okay, so on um, this one, I am going to put these little squares. In the middle of this circle on her shoe is a square. So I am going to take this little, oh, this looks like an octagon. It's not really a square. However, it's going to work. And I'm going to put that right in the middle of her shoe. Oh, I talked about giving that one dimension. Pops out. Okay. And I don't want the side. I could probably find multiple uses for those little things. So those little, um, they look like little crystals. I put on her shoe. And I'm going to, I didn't, I'm not going to do a whole lot to these guys. Because I just, there isn't a whole lot to do. I don't want to start adding where there aren't things and overdoing it. So I'm just concentrating on the areas that I can add color or bling or whatever. These ones, I didn't do the shoes yet. So let me grab my pink, I think it was my pink taffeta. <laughs> That one is the wrong pink, is it? Yeah, that's the bliss. Where did I go? Where'd my pink go? Help me, help me. Well, I'm going to need my purple. I do need that. And let me go ahead and add my purple first because I'm not seeing the pink. Oh, I've already got that on there. Duh. Man, guys, you see a pink glitter? I know I just had it. Oh, I should be on a show, The Comedy of Errors, because that would be me. I do not see it, so I am just going to grab another one. I already have one open, and I hate to open one if I don't have to, but I also don't want to look like any more of a fool than I just did. I think I gave enough today of that. Okay. I'm going to color in the little inside side of the shoe that you see. I'm going to color in solid. It's a little bit of a darker pink as well. Um, again, you, you can see when you look at the images or 
or pictures of of um, any of these daisies or, or minis. If you, you can see the shading a little bit in person. Um, they're one of the few characters that don't have a lot of shadowing and shading on their coloring. It's pretty straightforward and they're really easy to, easy to work with. There's other images that have way too much at, um, blend, oh man, I don't know what the word is. I don't know guys. Part of it is I don't know because I'm trying to concentrate on something else. My, my son and future daughter-in-law moved into their mammoth new home. I say mammoth because it's just the two of them and it's, it's funny. I said, you got a lot of kids you're going to have to have to fill this one, but they are loving it. My son-in-law gives me a wake up call telling me how awesome it is to look out his bedroom window and see deer in the farm behind them, but um, super excited for them. I'll take pictures next week. Uh, we're going to go over for dinner. My daughter-in-law, or, or soon to be, didn't want me to take pictures till she was finished decorating. I said, well, that'll be in another 30 years. Okay, there we go. Um, that one. Then let me see what I got right here. I don't know if I'm going to do anything on her. I did the shoes on her. I did the hearts on there. Um, yeah, I want something on her shoes. What do I want to put on her shoes? I just like a little decoration there. Let me see what I have. Okay. Oh, you know what I have? Is I have these dots. But they're not the right color. Let's see. Let's try again. Here's some little pearly, pearly things. And here's a little flower. We're going to use all of them. Got it. And... I am not going to take, take off the thing on the back of this one because these are really little. So, the lava glue and a button standing up. And I'm doing that one over here. Actually, what I should have done is put bows. I think they have to do the little dab in their eye because I see this. Minnie has it. Yeah, she's got the little glimmer in her eye. So I think I'm going to do the glimmer in the eye of Daisy. Whoops. Stay there, boy. And a little dot there and a little dot there. And let me do her. If I have it on one, I feel like they all need the glimmer in their eye. And a little that. And a little that. There we go. Got her glimmer. And where's the other one? Over here. So hers are still a little wet. So I'm going to put it on this side. On Minnie. And you very carefully keep from putting your hand in the wet glitter. There we go. I want to double check and make sure that this glue stayed down. And it did. I knew it would. Once it was dry, it's awesome. So we're done with that. I need to flip her over, do her other bows, but I'm going to hold her because I've got some. Oh, I didn't do the glitter on these shoes. So let me just add my little flower buttons there. And there, let that dry, get a little glitter dot in there, or glimmer dot, not glitter dot, guys. You're probably going to say you hadn't seen me filming in a long time that my, um, my speech has gone downhill, and it probably has quite a bit. I'm worn out, but... Trying to get back in the game here because I miss it. And, and again, it's my therapy. So, um, poor Jenna's um, grandmother passed away this past week. Um, and she's 
been rough on her. Um, she's doing better one day at a time. Linda Teller, um, after having lost my brother last year, now it's been two years already. Um, we just a day at a time, but um, she had a, a rough week or last this past week. It's been really hard. She's very, very close to this grandmother and she died quite suddenly. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not real sure, but I think it might have been something that probably could have been addressed. And she went into the hospital because she was had a nosebleed and they determined there was nothing wrong. Um, they checked her the best they could. She was 85, so it wasn't like uh, I mean, she, she's 85. So she went home and she was, started to not feel very good. And I don't think, I think the nosebleed came next. I don't remember the whole, the, the whole sequence of events that happened that led up to it. She wouldn't go to the hospital because she'd already been up there that day and they said there was nothing wrong. So she opted to not go back. And um, she passed away then in the morning uh, I don't know if she'd gone back, if it would have made any difference. She had an aneurysm that was untreated because of where it was located. There was more risk of doing anything operating. Um, so I don't know if they would have done anything differently, but she did go quickly, which was a good thing. But um, and my son and, and Jenna were in town for a wedding, her girlfriend's wedding or some some activity going on for the wedding that weekend, but they went to see Jenna's mother because it's out of town where they live, where her entire family lives there. And her grandmother lives right down the road, but they were running short on time and needed to get back to Madison. And it was like an hour and a half drive. So I said, well, we'll just come down and see her next week or whatever. And she passed away. So Jenna feels really bad because she didn't go see her, hadn't gone to see her which normally they do. She's very close to her family, kind of like our family. So um, anyway, I'm sure that people will give their condolences on this video. I forgot to mention that going on. Okay, there, got her done. So I will get some pictures updated of the, or uploaded with this video. Um, and hopefully the other video will already be up by the time you see this. But thank you for watching and <laughs> Let me get my, my little, oh, this is just too funny. I've got this noisy, noisy thing hooked up to it. Of course, it's Disney. I took it off my purse, which I'll probably end up taking it off and putting it back on my purse. But have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.